The, uh, we have uh, fond memories of that song, played it for years, but um, still remember Cicero Bible Church probably was our first Christmas in the Chicago area when we moved to Cicero for me, for, to go to uh, Moody Bible Institute. And Lori was in the second grade and stood in front of that church, a couple hundred people or so, and sang that song, made the pastor cry, <coughs> which you could see that. But um, um, <clears throat> part of the words is that to see the Son of God treated so. And um, but we all have an opportunity to 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 treat him, to to look to him, to respect him, to honor him, the Lord Jesus, as he should be. No matter what the world, no matter what the world is doing, <clears throat> and we do, um, we do. Sometimes we can get get caught up in, you know, we talk about every year the true meaning of Christmas and and these things. <clears throat> I'm sorry about the throat, but um, anyway, the um, I always find, and and I think you probably do too, that even with everything that's going on people, Christians, non-Christians, whatever, and the, the true meaning getting blurred and whatever, it always ends up for me being a, a special time of year. And and we enjoy the the worldly part of it, giving gifts and getting gifts and Christmas dinner tomorrow with the boys, we'll enjoy all of that. 
but every year God just he does bring those times and and that's what I, I would hope this morning would be and it certainly was last Wednesday wasn't it wasn't that a blessing and uh, just a blessing to see that and so if you did not if you were not able to be here even if you were here I would suggest uh, looking at the video you just seeing people from four different churches the joy in fellowship that was there and uh, the the singing the good message that we heard um, just everything truly truly a blessing so we do have some announcements uh, the 2024 budget proposed budget is back on the information table uh, of course no evening service uh, tonight uh, no evening Sunday evening service next week New Year's Eve uh, men's study on January 2nd uh, board meeting is now uh, January 12th, that's Friday at 9 a.m. January 14th, our annual meeting after the morning worship service. January 21 is our snow date. I don't think we have any other, anything else we need to bring our attention to, or do we? There's something? We might have a Wednesday night uh, prayer meeting, right? This week we will have Wednesday prayer, yes. Yes, we will. Okay, and uh, prayer needs, oh, I want another announcement. Um, Randy and Kelly, they're in Bloomington. They're having a family, uh, family Christmas together. But he called me yesterday and he said that Chris got a job, if you've been praying for Chris. And I, I'm gonna try to get this right and we can have, ask Randy, but I think Randy said he is now the main spokesperson for Illinois State University. Yeah, and so he doesn't have to leave. Illinois State is right there. He doesn't have to move away or anything like that. So they were all very, very pleased with that. But sound like Randy and Kelly are having having a good time with family there. So um, anything else I need to bring our attention to? Um, prayer Before, requests? Uh, pray for Jenna, getting closer. <laughs> Jenna, getting closer. Is that what you were going to bring up, Rich? No. Steve and Jenna will be traveling with their family. Stephen, yep. Is that this? Is that this week coming? Okay. okay, okay. Leaving Friday. Yep. Keep them in our prayers. Yes. Um, I got news yesterday that I have got a new great granddaughter okay. on the way. Betty Joe's son Bo and his <clears throat> wife. They lost a baby a few months ago, mm -hmm. and God has blessed them with um, a little girl, and everything looks good. Her mother that we have prayed for that thought had the ALS but it's right. Lyme's disease, they had to take her to Bloomington Hospital this weekend. Um, anyway. Can you give us first name for her? Lissa. <coughs> Lissa? Yes. Okay. She's having um, breathing difficulties. This is so. Bo's mother-in-law. Right. Okay. Right. And um, also... If we could all be praying for the people that I work with at the hospital. I work Friday, and I'm going to tell you what. That kitchen is a mess. I mean, the the the, um, the darkness that is there in the people, and so many disgruntled employees yep. and stuff. And it's it's very sad to see it like that. I mean, it was pretty bad when I was there, but it's worse now. Yeah. Well, see, some of the salt's gone now, so, or at least it's not there every day. Okay, let's, uh, so good you're here, good to see you all, and uh, it's a good way to start, why well, it starts, they start Christmas weekend, but it's really already be has begun, but um, it's just such a good place to be. It's like coming in and get uh, recalibrated every week obviously we should be doing that through our daily time with the lord but together as the saints of god it's uh, it's just a blessing so let's pray to him lord we do come to you and we we thank you for your goodness to us and we do lift uh, this lady before you lissa and uh, just the complications from these things that she's dealt with and just be with her and uh, just uh, Bo and his wife and another baby on the way, pray that that's a healthy delivery and we would ask that uh, continued <clears throat> prayer for uh, Jenna and Ryan uh, for their baby coming along. 
We uh, pray for Steve and Janet's travel. We just pray, pray this is really a blessed time with, with family, that it's safe uh, as far as uh, traveling arrangements and just the things that go on in our world now. Uh, just watch over them. We, we thank you as we'll look at this morning your, your shepherding care uh, of us. Uh, we thank you for Randy and Kelly's time together. It sounds like they're really enjoying time with family in Bloomington. We thank you for this good news of uh, Chris's Chris's job. Uh, just a blessing. It found something that he is will be uh, good for him. Will pay well. Will uh, allow him to not have to uh, to move away from his home. So we lift him before you. And just all of us, Lord, as we worship you this morning and then as we allow you to direct us uh, through the day and through tomorrow, uh, to think of you, of course, and to allow you to bring our, our thoughts to, the, to God coming to earth. Jesus, Son of God, came as an infant. And also, Lord, just to appreciate those around us, uh, to be a blessing to them to in the ways that you could would direct Holy Spirit that we can nudge them toward you a saving relationship or a closer relationship with you Lord God and uh, just thank you for opportunities that you give us daily thank you for this opportunity that you give us now to uh, to worship you to bow low before you that uh, just most of the world uh, doesn't know you I would say has forgotten you but didn't know you in the first place and just bring Debbie's uh, the hospital workers there the kitchen and and the darkness and the darkness is there because people are lost they they're disconnected from you and they need you and so um, help us to be as we looked at last Wednesday those lights shining brightly we praise you and thank you for this time together now Holy Spirit continue to direct us in Jesus name Amen Good morning, we shall stand and sing joy to the world, then we shall sit down and sing joyful, joyful, we adore you. We'll sing off all the verses today.
Praise resounds as earth rejoices in the birth of Christ the King. Shepherds kneel before the infant, trumpets sound and anthems raise. As with joy our hearts are lifted, joined in wonder, love, and praise. One second to catch our breath and our rhythm and then we'll start singing. Two, seven, eight. Angels we have heard on high. And um, we've sang this before, but we'll sing it again, won't we? Yes. We like it.
Join me in prayer. Mighty God, we thank you that we can be here this morning. Holy Spirit of God, we thank you for your your patience, your long suffering with us. We thank you that you live within us, that you direct us, that we can be led by you, walk by the Spirit, keep in step with the Spirit, and then we watch and observe as you produce your fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. It's a wonder to see the work of God in our lives we thank you for your word of truth we thank you for your faithfulness in teaching us and impressing these things on our mind and and showing us how these things can become part of our lives as we live the words of god as we live from every word that proceeds from the mouth of god just calm us now quiet us draw our full attention to you holy spirit as you teach us in jesus name amen We hear so many people, hear a lot of people express their sadness or longing or fr frustration, something along the lines that we've lost the meaning of Christmas, we need to recapture the magic of Christmas. It's actually, you read some of these comments, I did it just in my study and I did some online looking at things, there was a friend on, on Facebook, just people's um, sadness and then it, my sadness for them because some of them have have no idea have no idea of the joy that's offered to them but I agree that we as in as in the human race have lost something but most people and again the great sadness most people have no idea what they've lost and what was lost was the life we were created for to have a daily intimate relationship with our Creator God that touches us in the deepest places of our inner being and extends beyond us out to eternity. Ecclesiastes 3.11, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, He has put eternity into man's heart. Because of that, people know something's missing eternity is in their heart God has placed that there they know something's missing and they get glimpses and glimmers of eternity flickering in their heart but lost people do not know what they've lost and left to themselves they have no idea where to even begin their search that's why we see all these comments and and people frustrated sometimes angry but so often it's just sad I read this one man and he just he just wanted so much to recapture what he called the magic of Christmas and what he experienced as a child around Christmas time and it's there and then it's gone so how do we help <clears throat> how do we help people find the meaning of life we first need them help to help them discover what they've lost that's the first step and here's how we do that. We retrace our steps. Now think about it. If you've lost something, what's usually the first thing that we do? We retrace our steps. Okay. <clears throat> I had the, you know, you lose your purse. And then after hitting the panic button and flipping out and getting everybody all excited, we take a breath and say, okay, now, where did we have it? Okay, I remember... I had my purse in the car with me before going into Walmart. Or I remember I came in the house, I'm, my car keys is one for me, and it's like, oh, wh where did I put the car keys? Mm -hmm. And so we, we retrace, our, retrace our steps. So to help people find the true meaning of Christmas, we need to help them find the meaning of life so we take them back to where humans lost the true meaning of life. If you follow what I'm saying, if you need, it's like they need, they're looking for meaning and significance and joy. So where did we, where did we as in humans lose that? So we retrace our steps and when we do that, well, it takes us back to the Garden of Eden. And um, we, as in God's human creation, were created in God's image. But something terrible happened along the way and we're familiar with that. Because far from reflecting the image of God 
The Apostle Paul gives his inspired commentary on the state of humans as alienated from the life of God. Now remember, so we started out created in the image of God, perfect fellowship. Now Paul gives his inspired commentary. This is what he says, the state of humans, alienated from the life of God, hostile in mind toward him, doing evil deeds, darkened in our understanding, futile in our thinking with foolish, darkened hearts. And you know, I could probably go on for 10 minutes just reading scriptures, how far we are from God. But all the while, all the while claiming to be wise. All the while claiming to be wise. So what did we lose? What did we lose then? We lost our right relationship with our Creator God. And when you lose your right relationship with Creator God, you've lost everything. So why did we lose? Now we're getting closer and closer to where we can help them. Why did we lose our right relationship with our Creator God? Because Adam and Eve chose to not submit to His rule. It gets down to just very simple, basic things. So let's connect the dots. Submit to God's sovereign rule and live joyfully and meaningfully in the presence of God. That's where Adam and Eve were, beginning. Do not submit to God's sovereign rule and bring sin and death to the entire planet. That's what Adam and Eve brought about. So how do we get back to where we need to be? We bow before King Jesus. Jesus came to rule our lives. Do you want to live the abundant life that Jesus offers, that he offered in John 10.10? 10? He said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Do we want that life? Then bow before him as our ruler, as Lord of our life. Jesus came to restore his rule over our lives. Born in a manger in Bethlehem, Jesus Christ came to be a ruler who would shepherd his people. Matthew 2, 6, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. Now here's the punchline. For from you shall come a ruler, Jesus Christ, a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. But we humans <clears throat> don't like anyone ruling over us, do we? We brag how we are rebels, rogues, scoundrels, misfits, rule breakers, black sheep. We say what's on our mind. Boy, we tell it like it is, don't we? We do what we think is right. We don't play by the rules. We make the rules. That's why people are so happy. People believe, as Adam and Eve did, that sometimes you have to go against the established order to get what you want. Adam and Eve were the first to do this, but they certainly weren't the last. God's command to not eat from that to not eat from that tree was blocking their path to a better life, and they were just not going to tolerate that. So let's ask. You've heard this. How's that turn out for you, Adam and Eve? How'd that work out? And and maybe if if our attitude is one of rebellion and not submitting to the lordship of Jesus Christ, we might ask, how's that turn out for you? Where do we find joy and meaning in life? Where do we find our place before God Almighty and the life He offers? Where do we find those things bowed before the throne of Almighty God? Bowed before Jesus as our ruler. We find everything our hearts desire. People want Jesus to be something that fits with their life. They don't listen to what God said, this is who Jesus is. This is why he came. This is what he's going to do when he comes. This is how you find and receive this offer of abundant life that he promised. So first, this morning, we'll see that Jesus was born a ruler who would shepherd God's people. Matthew 2, 1. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, 
wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and, and all Jerusalem with him and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, they knew, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. We rightly so spend a lot of time in those earlier verses and maybe not so much about this, but this is more of who Jesus is and why he came. Well, the prophet they spoke about, what was the prophet Micah? So we see next, it says Jesus would rise up to shepherd the flock in the strength and majesty of the Lord. Micah 5 verse 2. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be the ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. Jesus Christ. We see we talk about King Jesus, but sometimes what we don't put together is King's rule. And what a lot of people don't put together is, I'm sad, I'm discontented, I'm, my heart is, and mind are disquieted. That's because Jesus isn't ruling your life. There's too much rebel going on. He was born to rule in Israel. He came with the purpose of rising up and shepherding the flock of God. And that's what that word it says in verse 4. And he shall stand. That's what it means. And that word means to, to rise up with a purpose in mind. And it says for he was told from of old. He was prophesied hundreds of years. This is who he is. This is what he is. he's going to come and do these things. He's going to stand. He's going to rise up with the purpose of shepherding the flock of God. Because of the shepherd king's rule in the strength and the majesty of the Lord, of Yahweh, his people will live securely. We'll examine this more as we go through this message this morning. But we need to understand too who this is, our, our shepherd, and really let it sink in. When the really heavy things and the really sad things and the disappointing things of this life come about, the things that, that frighten us, all of these things to see how powerful this our, our God is and his, his statements he, he makes such firm clear statements he wants us to know who it is that's taking care of us forever his own those who have come to him through Christ because of the shepherd king's rule in the strength and majesty of the Lord he shall be the peace of his sheep that's where we find peace is in Christ ruling emphasis here the shepherd king's peace comes through his rule over us and shepherding of us this is why obviously someone who doesn't know Christ is not going to have this peace but many Christians don't have the peace that they should have because they're rebel sheep they don't have the peace they have because they just can't that Jesus isn't ruling over their life they, they, don't under, they don't understand that. They still have this human notion that it's good to be the black sheep or whatever foolishness that we want to call them. But Jesus, he says in John 14, 27, we're familiar with that. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you, I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. When Christ is ruling our lives, we have his 
peace. And that's what Paul writes in Colossians 3.15. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. That happens when Christ is Lord of all. To which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. Next we see, and this is where this is going to develop, that we see Father, Son, Spirit. We see Jesus is, the Lord is our shepherd. It speaks of Yahweh there. That is speaking of Jesus. It speak, and this is speaking of him. Sovereign Lord Yahweh has declared the nature and intent of his shepherding. Exodus 34, 11. So we want to remember then when Jesus comes, we're going to see it in a little bit. Jesus says, I am the, I am the good shepherd. When he says in Psalm 23, uh, the, when, we say, when David declares, the Lord is my shepherd, this is who it's talking about. This is your shepherd. This is my shepherd. This is who is going to care for us for all eternity as we have come to know him, have this relationship restored through the blood of Jesus Christ. Ezekiel 34, 11. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. Well, what is, we're going to, where's our, my verse? Well, yeah, Luke 19, 10, what does Jesus say? The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. God, this is the Lord Yahweh, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so I will seek out my sheep and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and on, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. See these bold declarations that God gives us? And I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord Yahweh. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed and I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. He'll take care of his sheep and the false sheep, the professing sheep who don't know him, he will judge them. God has determined that we should be fully aware of who he is and what that means in regard to his care for his sheep. And I used the word there that um, sovereign Lord Yahweh has declared the nature and intent of his shepherding. And declare means to state emphatically. It's an excellent word to describe the Lord's intent as he gives us. It's like his official statement. Here's my commitment to you as to the firm active nature of his shepherding. Declare means to state emphatically and authoritatively. To announce something clearly firmly, publicly, officially, to say something in a solemn and emphatic manner. And God's saying, can you hear me now? Can you hear me, sheep, what I'm telling you? Our sovereign Lord wants us to be strengthened and comforted in knowing his commitment as shepherd of the flock of God. He gives us a clear statement so that we know what to expect of him. And this isn't something performance-based. You know, something uh, we've been reading through the Psalms, Carrie and I, and one of the things that has stood out to me is this person writing and how they struggle. And this, the last one, and I, I wish I'd had it here before us, but it's basically like this person struggling in his walk, but it's like, I know you'll rescue me, Lord, because I love your commandments. And this person acknowledging, I'm not where I should be, but I know that God will shepherd me and care for me. And that's comforting as we go through life because sometimes we do well and sometimes we don't do so well. His shepherding care is the same. Yesterday, today, forever. Being born as a babe in Bethlehem, Jesus, Son of God, stepped into time to search for his sheep who are lost and alone in the universe. And I want to give us some perspective with this, 
So we have Christ coming and he says, the Son of Man, speaking of himself, came to seek and save the lost. And we saw that Lord Yahweh declared that. That's what he would do. So we have eternity past. We have earth history. We have eternity future. We have those. Then we see these sheep were without hope and without God in the world before Christ intervened. We see that in our text here in Ephesians 2.12. Remember that you were at that time separated from God, having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. See, when we speak of being lost, people being lost, we were lost. Christ found us and brought us to himself. Yes. It, it isn't just lost it, it, it it's lost of a magnitude that it's hard for us to understand but if you can picture then eternity past earth history eternity future and you, we are this mere mortal and we're lost and we're in darkness and we're blind and we can't hear God and we can't see him that's our state that's who Jesus came he stepped into earth history as a baby, born in a stable, wherever it was, in a manger, cradle, whatever it might have been, God came. And now we can find our rightful place in all of God's created universe. That's why I said there, he was born as a babe. He stepped into time to search for his sheep. Taking on human flesh, <clears throat> Jesus, Son of God, could now gather all his sheep throughout the entire history of earth to shepherd them for all eternity. Verse 13 of Ezekiel. So we see in Ephesians 1 then, again this is just giving us our perspective of, of what has happened when Christ, he, well, let me just read the scripture. Ephesians 1, 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, and you'll see I've got it highlighted, in Christ, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. So, the beginning in our Bibles, it says, In the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So, before that time, God chose us in Christ to be his very own before in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth before God spoke this world into being before that he chose us in Jesus Christ Christ coming then is part of the salvation plan all of this to bring glory to God so he enters in time and space of earth to accomplish this task. That's what he's done is he's called you to himself in belief and he's called me to himself in belief. Peter speaks of this. To those who are Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, a messenger of Jesus Christ, to those who are elect exiles. And that's that's what we are. We're passing through, we're sojourners. We're, we are passing through. But if we could just take a breath and, and just to, to realize the chasm, the terrifying chasm that was before us, being lost <clears throat> in the universe, being alone in this universe, and then the blessings, all the spiritual blessings in the heavenlies in Christ, because Christ saved us out of that, and now he's restored us, he's reconciled us to our Creator. To those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. God himself is the shepherd of the sheep. And I've mentioned this a couple times. The Lord is my shepherd. Sovereign Lord Yahweh will tend his flock <clears throat> like a shepherd. I'll just repeat it. God wants us to know his role in our lives as shepherd over us. Jesus 
came. I want us to see the connection between ruler and shepherd. Jesus came, our text said, as a he was born to be a ruler to shepherd. Sovereign Lord Yahweh will tend his flock like a shepherd. Isaiah 49, go on up to the high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good news, lift it up. Fear not, say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. And they could have had those proclamations there when the wise men came. When the, well, actually, better yet, when the shepherds came right after the birth of Christ. And they could have shouted out, Behold your God. Behold the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. It's like, I don't know, maybe Mark said this last Wednesday, that the one there in the manger is the one who's holding the entire universe together. Behold the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. Behold his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. Shepherds care for their flock. They tend their flock. If you've seen a real shepherd in action, it, it's pretty amazing. He will gather the lambs in his arms. Again, God wants us to hear all of these things. We are his sheep. We are his lambs. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. John 10:11. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. John 10, 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. John 10, 26, but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. The sheep hear, we hear Christ's voice. If you're not following Christ, if you're a black sheep, if you're a rebel, you're, you're not submitting to his rule, we need to do what Paul said and maybe we need to examine to see if we are of the faith. Because his sheep hear his voice. How do we hear his voice? We read his word. We come to church and hear it preached, yes. We go to Bible studies, yes. But we read his word. It's where his sheep hear his voice, and he knows us. See, that's something pretty wonderful, too, that we won't take time to get into, but but God knows you. God knows me. We can seem, don't we, just can seem so insignificant. Just another number, a statistic, but God knows you. God knows me, and we follow him. Do we follow Christ? Not do we follow church tradition or follow whatever activism's going on or social or political or otherwise, do we follow Jesus Christ? Do we hear God's voice just push away all the nonsense and God says, here's what I want you to do and we follow him. Conclusion, Jesus came to rule our lives and to shepherd us forever. Those things go together. See, we want, a, and I started to say at Christmas time, but really it's any time of the year. We want to uh, make it something uh, emotional. We want to, uh, you know, it's like, oh, Jesus came to love us. Well, he did. God loved the world. Jesus, in his love for us, came and fulfilled his mission. But humans, we all have to guard against taking what God says <clears throat> And making it fit the direction that we would want to go. And that's foolishness. And that's rebellion. We need to hear God. What does he say? Is he, this morning, is, uh, is he ruling our lives? Is he Lord of all? If you're not living in the joy and abundance that Christ offers, then you need to find your way to the throne of God and bow before Jesus as Lord. As the tumult of this world, the, the drastic nature of whatever it is, Israel and Hamas or financial decline or the economy or whatever it might be, has that 
Is that thrown us, has upset our apple cart? And we don't have this peace that Christ offers. Our minds and hearts are disquieted, maybe even angry and resentful. We need to find, you need to find your way to the throne of God and bow before Jesus as Lord. Bow before the throne of God, you will find your heart's desire and so much more. See, there's things our hearts desire that we can't, it's like before we can't quite put our finger on it. Bow before the throne of God and it clicks. Bow before the throne of God. He connects the dots. You will have found your rightful place before your creator and redeemer, before God most high, who is sovereign Lord of all, before him in this place bowed before his throne, you will thrive and he will shepherd you as one of his very own now and for all eternity. A picture I have in my mind, if you have the person who doesn't come to Christ, they remain in rebellion their whole life, they reject Christ, the moment they take their last breath, they cross the threshold into eternity. What do you do to that? You, you don't, you're alone in the universe. Just set aside for a minute the, the judgment of God. What does a, a mere mortal do when they die and now there's eternity? You're lost. You have nothing. You do have the wrath of God though waiting for you. Now compare that to the one who's trusted in Christ. And you know that because he's ruling your life and he's shepherding you. And we know people like this. And they take their last breath and the shepherd's there. What's it say in Psalm 23? And this person knows this. And I, the King James, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You see the difference between having a shepherd, having a ruler, and not having one? That's why Christ came. Because you can see people alone in this world. It's why we crave friendships. It's why we get so much from family connections. But even the best of those, even the best of friends, and even the best of family connections, it lasts for this time of earth. You've got to have more. And that more is found in Jesus Christ. And you find that and everything else that your heart desires bowed before the throne of God. Joy and life and abundance are found in submission to the Lord of life. I mean, you see where it went in the ditch in a hurry when Adam and Eve did, they didn't submit. And sin and death came. But joy and life and abundance are found in submission to the Lord of life. Sadness and frustration are the sad companions of fools and rebels. Let's pray. Holy Spirit of God, thank you for speaking to us this morning, how we thank you for your word of truth, how we thank you we're not alone in the universe, how we thank you for your strong, complete, powerful statements as to who you are and to your desire to shepherd us and to care for us for now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We shall stand and sing, I heard the bells on Christmas Day. It's one of those songs that every word is good, so. Tells a story. Tells a story, that's right.
I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, good will to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep, the wrong shall fail the right. so much to be thankful for. Yes. Lord, we uh, thank you so much for your amazing love that you sent your son to, to die on that horrible cross that we can live with you someday. Lord, I uh, just want to lift up these requests today. I uh, like to lift up the, the lost, Lord, the, the people that do not know you, the, the dark the people that are in darkness Mm -hmm. that they might stumble upon this video today and hear your hear your truth mm -hmm. let your Holy Spirit touch their soul and heart Lord I just thank you so much for all that you do for us Lord we love you yes. in Jesus name Amen. Amen. 